So not that long ago, I put up a poll over on my community tab asking people if they had political anxiety. And the results were a little bit interesting because I didn't expect to see what I saw. Now, I know people get political anxiety, but one of the main comments I saw was that people get political anxiety because they fear when they talk about politics, somebody is just going to freak out on them. And that's kind of the reason why I'm talking about Joe Rogan and Russell Brand today, because these two are a perfect example about how to have an adult conversation with two opposing views without freaking the hell out. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture or the YouTube community and try to see what lessons that we can learn from them. Because realistically, what is the point of consuming all of this content if we're not trying to see how it can benefit our own lives? So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And did you know, did you know, I am over on Instagram and Twitter, make sure you're following me at The Rewired Soul. Um, I do a lot of polls. I'm trying to get more feedback on things. Um, I am going to be writing a new book soon and I want your feedback on that. But anyways, make sure you're following me on social media. So yeah, Joe Rogan and Russell Brand recently did an episode on the Joe Rogan podcast, all right? And oh my God, like I, it was three hours and I, I took it piece by piece. I would like listen when I was driving, but it was like three hours. It's hard for me to like sit through for three hours. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, these two dudes, are so different on a few topics that would usually make people freak out, but they're able to have these conversations and share different thoughts and ideas. And that is one thing, like I do think that we're in a time where there are some groups of people who are getting into this content, like long form content and just deep conversations, because even here on YouTube, like I try to keep my videos between like the 10 and maybe 15 minute mark, right? And I think that that's too much because we are living in a time where people have very short attention spans, but I do highly, highly, highly recommend, like it is Mental Health Awareness Month, start paying attention to more long form content, whether it's podcasts, um, you know, people like doing lectures online, whatever it is, like it will, it will greatly help you get into critical thinking. But anyways, so on one hand, you have Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, is a hunter, a meat eater, all right? He is also somebody who likes to do his fair share of drugs. Then on the other hand, you have Russell Brand. Russell Brand is a vegan, and he's been sober for over a decade now, all right? So, like on paper, if you put these two together, you're like, oh my God, things are gonna get out of control. So the first thing I'll talk about is the way they can have conversations around substance use. So I can definitely relate to Russell Brand because I am somebody who's really into like Buddhist philosophy and just meditation and consciousness and spirituality and all these other things. And Russell Brand talks about how like he, he often gets tempted by psychedelics, like drugs like DMT, because they talk about this like ultra spiritual experience you could have. And I'm like, yeah, Russell, I know, like I read a lot of books on like Buddhist philosophy, um, how psychology relates to Buddhism. And in all these books, they talk about like these like um, magic mushrooms uh, being used in, uh, in psychology. And like, uh, it was decades ago when they finally got like laws to pass where they said they can use it in uh, psychological studies. Um, some people like um, are into microdosing these days. So I can definitely relate to Russell Brand, but again, he's sober. so. He understands, he understands that when he takes a substance that gets him out of himself, he will find a way to abuse it, which can also lead as a gateway back to his primary drugs. Now, Joe Rogan is somebody who loves tripping out, all right? He loves it, okay? And one thing I do wanna mention where I do give a lot of credit to Joe Rogan is his own personal growth. And I think it's attributed to the fact that he brings so many guests on his show that have different views and opinions than he does, and that's helped him grow. What I'm getting at is a year ago, he did a podcast episode with Russell Brand, and I was a little turned off by the way Joe Rogan was talking to Russell Brand, 
because it seemed like Joe Rogan was trying to convince Russell Brand, like, come on, it's just a little pot, or come on, psychedelics, they're not addictive, right? And that was kind of Joe's stance on it, and it almost seems like he was trying to, like, tempt Russell, and, like, I'm not cool with that. But anyways, like, Russell Brand is somebody who has a very solid recovery, so Joe Rogan isn't gonna, you know, convince Russell to, like, lose his sobriety over just like you know a conversation but anyways in this episode in this episode joe rogan could see from his point of view even though he believes in smoking pot even though he believes in psychedelics and all these other things they had a really good conversation about achieving that that kind of uh, uh connection with your your own consciousness and getting rid of ego even if it's a brief moment through other methods and joe rogan was actually talking to russell about other options like he was like hey man like you don't even need to do these drugs and they talked about like uh kundalini yoga these deep um kind of meditative states they also talked about um what are those like uh those water chambers where you like float it's a sensory deprivation tanks right like there are other options for people like me. So if you're somebody like me who's a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery, you don't need substances to get to that place. Like, I am somebody much like Russell Brand where I don't have an issue if other people want to do, you know, if they want to smoke pot, even if they're, you know, doing psychedelics in a controlled, non-illegal environment. Like, you do your thing, boo. It's just that's, that's a shortcut that I cannot take. So, like, if that's the way that you reach that, there are people who are, you know, going to South America to do, like, things like ayahuasca and all of that stuff. And I might do some videos on that. But I, I just love watching these two have a conversation around these things without Russell, like, because this could go the other way. Like, Russell could be like, I'm sober and I think drugs and alcohol are bad and you shouldn't do them and it can lead to addiction, da 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 right? And Joe can keep trying to force his idea of weed is not addictive and all, all these other things. But... They just have a nice, calm, adult conversation around this. The second thing, the second thing is a vegan talking to not only a meat eater, but a hunter, okay? So those of you who don't know about me, I've been a vegetarian for going in on two years, okay? I haven't gone full vegan yet, but Russell, he has teetered between vegan and vegetarian. So anyways, on paper, you would think that a vegan and a guy who hunts animals and kills them would just collide, but they don't. One thing I love about Russell Brand is he is not a D-bag vegan, okay? Like, I have just debated a million times on making videos. Like, I am in some, like, vegan um, Facebook groups and everything, and just seeing the outrage in there and the way people are just at each other's throats and just, like, I'm, like, sitting there, I'm, like, what is happening like even oh man it it gets brutal so i always love seeing a fellow non-meat eater just be open to the conversation like i'm not sitting here judging anybody who eats meat right so on the other hand then you have joe rogan who is a hunter he hunts uh animals but joe is very he's very ethical about his meat eating okay and he talks a lot about the hunting experience, the spiritual experience, a lot of other things where it makes sense. And you can see that Russell understands. And they have an interesting conversation about how Russell says, I get it. I get it. I understand. But Russell talks about, like, his specific morals and, uh, and, and his ethics. Like, he couldn't see his, himself doing it. Like, he would feel immensely bad. But he talks about how he appreciates people like Joe Rogan who can do it in an ethical way. So even when it ta uh, when talking about eggs and things like that, like Joe Rogan is absolutely disgusted by factory farming, which in my opinion, a lot of people should be, okay? Not just for the ethical um, treatment of animals, but just also the damage they're doing to our environment. And Joe Rogan even talks about um that that documentary that vegan documentary what the health and he explains to russell all of the like um false information out there and the bad science and everything like that and russell just he listens and is open to that conversation rather than just like standing on his soapbox and just say no no meat no dairy nothing that comes from animals like he's open to the conversation about how yeah this documentary wasn't all that good you know what i mean so like what I, I highly 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 recommend like if you are somebody who 
is afraid of having conversations when you have different opinions on such serious topics, like whether it's politics, whether it's, um, you know, uh, um, the foods you eat, whether it's substance use, um, whether it's mental health. Like this podcast is a three hour experience of how adult conversation should happen. And when I watch this, I'm just like, how many, how much better, how much better would this planet be if more people could just have conversations like this? You know, I, last thing I'll say is I was in Florida for um, Playlist Live a couple months ago and Florida has many, you know, right-leaning people and um, I'm more on the, on the liberal side, but like I had a conversation with somebody who is on the other side of the aisle and we talked for hours and I understood things about their side and they understood things about mine. I'm just like, man, like I would have political conversations all day long if like this is how they went, you know? So keep your emotions checked, learn how to have these conversations without freaking out, all right? And is this something that you struggle with? Is this something you want me to make more videos on? Let me know down in the comments below, all right? But it's Mental Health Awareness Month, so start working on your communication, baby girl, okay? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell, because I make a ton of videos. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at The Rewired Soul. And lastly, a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.